Everybody does it. We all overeat sometimes during the holidays. But fortunately, nutrition expert Holly Thompson is here to show us what to do the day after a big meal so you can feel back to normal as soon as possible. Thanks Absolutely. for being here, Holly. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So is there any other way to do Thanksgiving than to overeat? I mean, who doesn't overeat on Thanksgiving? Not, I mean, <laughs> not in my book. Not in my family, <laughs> I should say. That's part of enjoying it, right? And Having as much as you want. I, I think that's right. I mean, I, I think a lot of people try to, you know, white knuckle their way through a holiday and it backfires. Yeah. And it's, it is the time to enjoy and relax and be with family and indulge in some of your favorite foods. However, the next day the you next have to get day. back on track. That's right. So we're here to talk about the next day. What mm -hmm. to do Friday morning and start right in and you know, get going the day after those little indulgences. What is the first recommendation? Okay, so it's all about your digestion and your metabolism the day after a big meal, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever it is, you need to start burning at the next day because you're that all of that food from the night before has not magically disappeared. So it's not the day to not eat and it's not the day to do a juice fast or a master cleanse or drink water all day, you know, only water. It's the day to stoke the furnace in a smart way. You are revving up the metabolism. We are revving the metabolism. So we want to start with, you wake up and we want to start with water. We want to hydrate all day long. And this is my way of making it fun and a little delicious so it's not a boring thing to do all day. So I'll wake up and spice a pitcher with whatever I have. This is a little seasonal spice that we did. Some clementines, some cinnamon sticks, star anise, a little ground nutmeg. And you can put whatever you like in your water and start drinking that as soon as you wake up to get your body going and your di help your digestion and your metabolism and keep that revving. Does cold water work better than room temperature water? I prefer room temperature water. Because I do you're, too. Yeah, because it goes down easier. Absolutely, and your body, your body is room temperature or, or warmer than room temperature. So to add in cold water, I think is a little bit challenging. So I do a little bit, a little bit cool, but not ice water. Hmm. So, so number two, we want to add in those good leafy greens. So we always love our leafy greens. Leafy greens are going to help balance us. But as I said, it's not the day for a juice cleanse. So this is a green, a, a green smoothie which retains all of the fiber. So we want to get start getting fiber in that's going to help move everything through our digestion. So what's in the green smoothie? Green, this green smoothie happens to be romaine, kale, uh, bean sprouts, lemon, ginger, and celery. How so does that taste, Holly? I, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, this is, you're looking at my leftover from my breakfast. Here. I've heard that you can put an apple in there to sweeten it up. You can put up. an apple. You can do some sort of fruit. With the water, how much water do we need to drink all day? I would say uh, I would do, go through at least one big pitcher. Um, sometimes too. Uh, you know, this that is also, in addition to the green smoothie, this is going to help get rid of all that excess sodium from the ah. day before. So we do, we need to eat, but we do want to flush that excess sodium out of your body too. And gotcha. the fiber in the smoothie will help ease the digestion. Should you add any kind of a fiber supplement in there or will the vegetables, that gives you enough fiber, uh, natural you're fiber? You're going to get, and we're, and we're going to continue to talk about some other fiber There's ways. more fiber too. coming. There's more <laughs> fiber coming. We're not done with the fiber. We're we're not yeah. done with the fiber. That's right. So we also want to make sure that we have good quality protein in our day, beginning with breakfast. And pro what protein does is protein is going to strengthen you. It's also going to um, going to sustain you and again help balance you. So the natural way to have protein. I mean the day after Thanksgiving, if you eat animal protein, is going to be with turkey. Hmm. Turkey's a great choice. It's light. You can, But today, instead of having turkey with stuffing, I'd like you to have it with lots of fresh leafy greens. More fiber, so you get your good quality protein to keep your metabolism moving, to stoke the furnace, but you have fiber to continue to ease everything through that digestion. A great alternative, and you probably know about this, is a seed called quinoa. Yes. Q-U-I-N-O-A, not quinoa. And everybody <laughs> misspells it. It's quinoa. And I love quinoa um, all during the day, really. I have it. We use it as a morning, a morning breakfast cereal in our house. So here's some 
quinoa with goji berries, and you can add a little bit of almond milk, a little bit of cinnamon, which is also going to stoke that metabolism. So you cook the quinoa like you cook oatmeal? You can, you, absolutely. You and can then cook, you add the berries? Yes, you can cook quinoa ahead of time, you can keep it in the refrigerator, and you can add it to a saucepan, a little bit of almond milk, warm it up, add some dried berries, some nuts if you like, a little bit of, um, of your milk of choice, and it's a wonderful breakfast cereal, and it is high in protein. It's a, it is a balanced protein, so if you are a vegan or if you don't want, if you're trying to go easy on your digestion the day after Thanksgiving where you may have eaten a lot of animal protein the day before, a lot of turkey or meat or whatever kind, today, that day might be a great day to try quinoa. Um, quinoa can also be, you can also use that batch of quinoa later in the day as a warm pilaf. You can add vegetables to it. You can add a little bit of a broth. You can have it on, you know, as just a meal or in this case I put it with, as a cold salad with some leafy greens again. Delicious. And yeah. what about this here? Carrots and uh, sweet potatoes? Yes, these are roasted root vegetables. So this is a seasonal choice, obviously, and it's so pretty. But the day after a big meal, we've often indulged, people often indulge in those carbohydrates that we love so much. A lot of carbs. Absolutely, it's the pie, the pecan pie, the stuffing, bread, biscuits, you know, whatever it is. And your body sort of it might crave it the next day. So to help you with those new carb cravings, um, it, roasting some root vegetables, some sweet potatoes, some carrots, some different squashes, maybe beets, um, will help with carb cravings. It'll also, once again, bring in more fiber, and it'll give you a sweet that will help counteract the craving that the car the need for sweets that the for carbohydrates <laughs> created, exactly, that they created. So, um, yeah, so roasted root vegetables are a great choice, and then the day after Thanksgiving, you may have some root vegetables around anyway. All right, I see the uh, tennis shoes here. We have our shoes, shoes on the table. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to get moving, too. You have to move. It's a great day to move, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Grab your mom, grab your whatever it is. Grab your sister, walk the dog, get outside 10, 15, 20. 30 or more is ideal, but you have to move, and that's going to get that metabolism going as well. So these are all great ways to stoke that, soak that furnace and get moving the next day. Now we know. Fantastic recommendations. Holly Thompson, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And we will be right back.